am 26 years old and I'm a trans feminine person on cross-sex hormones. For quite a long time I've been struggling with intense depression around dating. I often find myself feeling very lonely, but any time someone shows interest in me and tries to get close, I get scared and try to push them away. I've been in only one relationship before with a woman, only one relationship before with a woman, and she had to have a lot of determination to get through my barriers because she was the one who made all the moves and I had to be the one to fall for her. She was also very accepting of the fact that I'm transgender and got discussions going about embracing the idea of us identifying as a lesbian couple. And she often called me very beautiful. She made me very happy. Near the end of our relationship, I cut off contact with her because I felt she deserved better than me. I know that was wrong and my insecurity is a terrible excuse. I never want to do that again. And when she managed to get back in touch with me, I told her we needed to break up because I hurt her. She told me that she hopes I can be happy as a person I am and I never heard from her again. I feel like I'm incapable of giving and receiving love and like I don't deserve to be loved in the first place, but I don't want to spend the rest of my life alone. Part of it is that I still can't move on. I still struggle to let go of my few remaining insecurities of being trans and can't let go of my remorse. Is there any way that I can cope with being alone or more, or open up more with others? I'm crying right now, I'm sorry. That's in the text. So the, there are a couple of ways of, of tackling this, right? Because, I mean, on one hand, you know, um, of course, we, you know, are m more than happy to try and, uh, and tackle your insecurities around, I suppose, transitioning. However, as you may understand, as two cis women would like for you, if at all possible, to really get in touch with supportive groups of people that are going through the experience that you are. And in the optimistic awesome way it's 2019 there are plenty of those uh, resources out there way more than there had been like five or ten years ago so that's awesome on the sort of second part and i'm sure we'll go into both of them as such is that like if we just want to get down to like you're an awesome you know lady that's into ladies and we talk about you know your insecurity issues that that we can more than happy to sort of oh, tackle yeah. that as well but basically there are there 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 are ones that that the, there are basically kind of somewhat two issues here and with one of them will be more tank, like helpful than with the other as such. Yeah, with the first one about um, the whole like, insecurity around transitioning, the best I can do, unfortunately, is to recommend this um, fantastic Facebook group I'm part of, which I've recommended in previous shows called Sounds Like You Need to Be um, Educated on trans Transgender Individuals But Okay, which is a great um, trans discussion group that I'm there, I, I just observe, I don't engage as a cis person but I've learned so much there and a lot of people talk about their experiences and often like DM each other so and from there you could find leads to other groups which you can talk about this kind of thing and people talk about everything there from like dysmorphia to dating to like fears around like uh, telling someone you're trans Absolutely. all of the things um because yeah I don't feel like it's yeah our place to uh, basically I can't I can't I can't relate to that like and yeah we... and I, I think it would be flippin shady if we attempted to right yeah. I mean we have like for Full sympathy, and we will definitely will try and attempt to tackle some of mm -hmm. these things now in our answer. However, I mean, again, you've seen us; you probably, you know, you know our limitations. So that's what we'll definitely, go, you know, we'll yeah. try and tackle this question. But just sort of say, I don't know. I'm kind of really optimistic in this because, as I say, there are just like lots of documentation of people going through exact issues that you're going through and even to think about this like one particular relationship that you're describing where like it seems to me like the biggest problem that there was with it was um, your insecurity around your uh, tran transitioning and your almost overt appreciation of any person that would be like dealing with that yeah. and you're just basically so thankful to like the one person that like took you on or something which just sounds wrong and and but again the, I don't know there's just more and more people that are willing to, to whatever deal with that I mean I don't I don't think it should be even anything to deal with us actually like either love someone or not but I'm sorry I'm coming again from a privileged position where I just see optimism in this whereas you're dealing with this like grind grind day to day but something to be said about conversations that were never even being had five or ten years ago and right now you're in the crux of it but soon enough in five or ten years time it's not even gonna be like an issue as such people will just people would have like probably met 
other trans other trans people have been in relationships with other trans people have told their friends about how things are have watched videos like this videos made by even more like people that are even more um i guess in touch with 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 this and so of course i mean oh, she's been cancelled a little bit but yeah. no <laughs> but um as in tomorrow will be better i mean i'm sorry it's a kind of a shitty um comparison that will happen like right now like I'm kind of involved, I guess, in trade unionism and the gangs industry and that, and like so many people are suffering in that, and so many dates there of their issues are aired in like a very, very painful way. But what you always have to think in mind is like, two years ago we didn't have those uh, resources. In five or ten years time, these are not even going to be the conversations that are even had. So it's going to be the status quo where like video games workers just have rights, you know. So, so though you're in the midst of this. It's not gonna be like this forever. It's only gonna get better. People, us cis people, are only getting get, getting educated and are learning our own behaviors more and more. And I, I'm, if anything, I'm sorry that it's at the historical plight of 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 of, of you. Um, but yeah, and I guess fundamentally, like yeah, again, what we talked about, I guess Christianity, and you're always feeling, you know being fed that what you are what you've been where what you're into is like a sin or guilt that y you also f feel like you know i've always been told that I, i'm i'm this gender but actually i'm i'm not but now i'm making it fat for other people to see me as how i really am of course there's like terrible you know ingrained guilt in that and i don't know just get a bit more arrogance in you <laughs> you seem to be extremely articulate and awesome and self-reflective person. If anything, sometimes sorry, I'll finish my rant quickly. But um, sometimes we I recognize those questions where we know that our answer will actually mean less than you even writing down the question. And it seems to me like even if you sent this question to the person perhaps that you've had this relationship with, to be like, hey, this happened. I just sent this in. Perhaps this tells more than I was ever able to tell you. And in a way, that seems to me the case where. You writing this down and it kind of in a way answers your own question yeah i have a sense too that i don't feel like you expect us to bring anything new to the table per se in your analysis of this because analysis seems pretty down pat like you acknowledge that you in a way self-sabotage your own relationship because it sounds like you had someone stellar like i'm sure there are other issues whatever but like you acknowledge already yourself the kind of thing that we would say, which is that like maybe it was your own personal issues that were getting in the way of your ability to trust. Building trust mechanisms is something we could talk about. Also, something that I don't know if you're seeing a therapist or not, but if you have access to, would be a really useful thing because trust in yourself and trust in other people. Because it's so hard. It's kind of in a way linked to the pity fuck thing, but it's so hard feeling like the person you're with is with you out of some kind of obligation out of out of just love and it's really hard when you find yourself unable to trust your partner that's heartbreaking especially when you know it's coming from you and not from them and that's an incredibly incredibly painful and tricky thing oh, to yeah. get out of like i had that in a much less extent last Same. summer when i was aware that i was the the drain and she was the mm. there 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 and i was using that shamelessly but also so aware that i don't know it could basically one where she was making me feel less shit about the fact that I felt like shit and like yeah I had a similar experience with you with I mean again w way less like way more society ex acceptable and easier to deal with but like to do with class as such where I was seeing and madly in love with someone that was just like pressure than me and I could never get rid of that insecurity and I was resentful and they were perfectly nice and lovely to me and were ready to spend the rest of their life with me but I was just like you know, I, I can't do it, I can't be as together as you and your parents and all of this, I just, it's gross. And I kind of, in the end, self-sabotaged it, probably. Will probably regret it for the rest of my life, whatever. But do I have regrets over the end of it? No, I don't, because I don't think at the time I was capable or able to bridge that gap in any yeah. shape or form. Like, this wouldn't have happened. And again, I think it was that down to that person to eventually somehow make well i mean they kind of did they kind of pushed it a bit too far in a sense but um to make me feel more secure but um but but the, at the end of the day you know every relationship is an experience where you learn from uh which you learn from and and um this probably couldn't have ended in any other way from from the period that you're in right now i mean you're also 
transitioning right now, that's not forever. At some point, you will be at the other end of it, and you'll be like a, you know, the sassy fucking lady that you already are. Like, hormones are a bitch. They give yourself a break on that front. Like, um, the other thing I would say about the prior relationship is the fact that you are already able to acknowledge that in a way, it, like, you kind of messed it up through your own insecurities means that you have already said to yourself, like, well, you're like, I'm gonna be alone forever, but you've already acknowledged to yourself, someone wanted to be with me. They wanted to be with me as I am. They loved me. I pushed them away because of my own issues, which is understandable. But your fear that no one will ever love you is unfounded because the Bullshit. proof is in the packet. Yeah. You had this person and you will have this person again. I'm not being like, you had this person, you blew it. No. I'm saying your worry that you'll never find anyone who accepts you is already disproven by your yeah. own experiences. So that's an amazing Absolutely. thing to remember. Yeah. When you're feeling down, remember that, wait, no, even in the height of my insecurities and like self-doubt there was someone that really loved me i am capable of being loved and this is the height of the insecurities i don't i like i, I don't think it will get worse it will only get better as you settle in in your own new body as in as you settle in in the way that other perceive other people yeah. perceive you know? as society settles in 100 percent. yes yes um it will just get it will get better and it will get easier and um and again yeah the society is changing yeah. And I mean, what I'm, I guess what we're trying to say is that the darkest period is n now. I want to just tackle the act, the specific questions um, she asked at the back, which are, is there any way I can cope with being alone or open up more with others? Coping with being alone is an art form. And it's fucking hard, especially with winter coming and I get depressed in winter. So I feel you that friends is the number one thing I cannot stress enough and when I want to be by myself and just chain smoke myself to death in the garage having Mariam come in once every two hours for a fag is or one of the things that keeps me alive drag you to Clapton games <laughs> or dragging me to Clapton games like doing things when you don't feel like being social makes you feel so much better because you can fall into that vortex again where it's Easily. much more difficult to, to get out of. And I've been there. Yeah, and hobbies are also really, really important. Yeah. You know, find what you're, you know, excel at or whatever you're interested in and just find community yeah. around that. Online friends as well. I know it's yeah. like not cool, but like I spend most of my life on Facebook right now and I've learned so much. <laughs> like, and you chat with people and people around the world are experiencing the same things as you or different things that make you see things in a different way. Like, just don't be alone in the sense of like even if you're in a bedroom on facebook on your phone that counts like yeah definitely if you're even just talking to people across the world yeah. or whatever that's yeah so there's alone and there's lonely right that's absolutely mm -hmm. fine to be alone not to say that we don't always need to also invest in that as well i mean i know fuck me like i know been in polyamorous relationships i had lots of friends and lots of social capital was i still incredibly alone yes mm -hmm. and lonely or whatever and it's just yeah. you will never not have lonely times like yeah. today, you I'm can really be surrounded by yeah. Yeah, every, but yeah. yeah. Today, I'm really proud of myself because I spent a few days uh, by myself recently and felt really uh, bummed out and depressed and not happy. And today was the one day where I felt really good about being home alone. I did the gardening, I did the laundry, I went and did some shopping. And doing those like household tasks that I put off because I'm like, I'm depressed, I, I owe it to myself to watch TV all day. That feels so much worse, and, and I know this, and yet I still find it really hard to actually do this. And I've done this this one day in a blue moon, and I feel top of the world because I managed to spend a day at home by myself. I polished my fucking boots. Wow. Yeah, right? Yeah, that, wow, wow. And I also managed to watch an entire season of Dairy Girls. So, like, Damn, I managed to do the, like, moping around watching TV and the hustle task, and I felt really good. So, like, also, yeah, investing in yourself, and I know that sounds really preachy, but I know it for myself. It's so easy to sink into yourself and do nothing and be super fucking blue but you got this yeah like you, you clearly do people are gravitated towards you it just it's down to you to find that self-love and yeah. i think eventually you will i understand what you would right now where like you know the way that you know your your mind doesn't fit with your body and 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 but it will eventually and and i don't know i think bright times ahead mm. And with regards to like how to open up with others, don't try all others. Don't even try an other on the first date or two in terms of opening up to yourself because like a lot of dickheads around. A lot of dickheads around. You have to build trust and it's a slow thing, but once you have one or two or yeah, you know, even fucking one person that you can open up about yourself with, it feels huge. Even if it's not someone you're dating. 
because the, the more you're able to talk about yourself and your emotions, the more normalized it seems and less taboo it feels. Yeah, the like I realize other people also feel that way, even like yeah. the ones that pretend to be cool or whatever. This is the thing, like I have maybe like three, no, maybe four, no, five, okay, it's building up, it's been lovely, I've been in London for a year now. Um, uh, it's literally exactly a year since I flew to London to see the house after my graduation when I was here for a week and you came to visit me and we looked at the garden and we saw the squirrel and we Stop named her way. Emma. <laughs> <laughs> the dickhead. Yeah. Um, and it took me a while but I have, yeah, I have maybe five friends now after a year that I can open up with and the more people you say open and honest stuff, the more people relate back to you and the more it builds and you become used to it and you don't become scared. I know it's, I'm talking com completely from a cis perspective, I I'm completely understand opening up about trans stuff is a much scarier thing because there's also like, hello, there's risk of death in a way that is just not understandable to us. But that's why I do unfortunately recommend taking it slow with building up the opening of trust, but when you do it, it's so rewarding. Yeah. Yeah, talk about those insecurities and all that, but I think we are creating bit by bit spaces where people are able to. And I think this is a huge first step with you even just writing yes. in. Thank you. And yeah, thank you so much and good luck. And remember, you are so lovable. Like, yeah. you clearly were already and you will be again because, yeah, people are into cool people and you seem pretty fucking cool. So keep at it. <laughs>